What's up guys? It's Ollie from History Profiles and this video will be about the life of Lubu, otherwise known as the Flying General. Lubu was a godlike figure, born in the year 161 AD. This was a time of non-stop war, betrayal and strife. He was born in the Jiyuan County, now modern inner Mongolia. Not much is known about his youth, except that he was tall, athletic, and had immense physical strength. He was a master of archery, horseback riding, and could wield nearly all weapons in combat, being unmatched. Lubu's story starts when he was noticed for his martial prowess in Bing province, which was once a location in ancient China. A man named Ding Yuan, a minor warlord, recruited young Lubu. Ding Yuan was like Lubu in many ways, born into a poor family and known for being a warrior and brave. He never turned away from a fight, no matter the odds. He was a man Lubu looked up to and would become almost a father figure to him. After the death of Emperor Ling, in 189 AD, Lubu would have a taste of battle. However, not everything would be as it seemed. Lubu's master, Ding Yuan, led his troops to the capital, Luoyang, a beautiful walled city where the emperor was meant to reside. This was in order to assist the general He Jin in killing the eunuch faction who were a group of influential eunuch officials serving the imperial court of Emperor Ling, who were also exceptionally loyal to the emperor and his bloodline. The faction were also known as the Ten Attendants. General He Jin was the brother of the consort of Emperor Ling. Where He Jin had influence over the emperor's court, as Emperor Ling died, chaos was brought about due to the power struggle between several warlords who wanted to govern ancient China themselves. During this time, a conflict ensued between the eunuch faction and He Jin. The eunuch faction were clever and were always coming up with schemes and plots. They lured He Jin into a trap in the imperial palace and all assassinated him. The capital city then turned into a state of turmoil, as the commander of the old emperor's army had been killed. Before He Jin was killed, he ordered the warlord Dong Zhao to eliminate the eunuch faction, but He Jin died before he could arrive. The eunuchs then took Louis Ban, the emperor's son, and fled from the city, but were captured by Dong Zhao, who had also taken command of the fallen He Jin's forces. The warlord Dong Zhao then convinced Lu Bu to turn on his commander, Ding Yuan, a man who had almost been a father to him, in order to further grow his army. Lu Bu then killed his commander and cut off his head and presented it to his new general, Dong Zhao. Lu Bu instantly became the cavalry commander due to his prowess and was later promoted to the position of general. In the year 190 AD, many warlords formed an alliance led by the warlord Yuan Shao, one of the most powerful warlords at the time, against Lu Bu's superior, Dong Zhao. As the warlords realized he had been manipulating the government and he was the real one pulling all of the strings, Dong Zhao had overthrown Emperor Ling's successor, Emperor Shao, as he was just a child at the time of his ascent. Dong Zhao had replaced him with Emperor Jian, who was simply a puppet ruler, obeying Zhao's every wish and command. Zhao essentially controlled the Eastern Han Dynasty and a huge portion of China. He quickly went from being He Jin's lesser commander to the ruler of China, through taking advantage of the chaos that was brought about due to Emperor Ling's death. 
Lubu fought many battles for his lord, but eventually Lubu and his forces were overwhelmed by the alliance of other warlords, and his master, Dong Zhao, decided to evacuate the capital city of Luoyang, where they resided. Luoyang was then set ablaze. Zhao and Lubu retreated west, and the capital moved to Changyan. For some reason, the warlords didn't follow Zhao, and the wall dissolved. Zhao had fear that he would be assassinated and kept Lu Bu very close. He even became his personal bodyguard. Zhao, however, didn't give Lu Bu the respect a mighty warrior deserves, and in a rage, threw dagger axes at him. If Lu Bu wasn't so fast and agile, he would have surely died. Lu Bu watched how Zhao behaved and grew to hate the man he was, full of lust, greed and anger, with no merciful or compassionate side to him. Although Lu Bu now saw Zhao as a father, reckless thoughts constantly crossed his mind. He had betrayed a father figure before, and perhaps would do again. Lu Bu went to see Wang Yang, a Chinese politician serving the Han government. Lu Bu was infuriated that Zhao had nearly killed him in a rage, and told Wang. Wang told Lu Bu that there was already a plot to kill Zhao, as he was far too reckless. Lu Bu then said, But we are father and son. And Wang quickly replied, Your family name is Lu, so you have no blood relations with him. He was not concerned about you at all when you almost died. So where is your father and son bond? Lu Bu heeded Wang's words, and agreed to kill his lord and father figure. Lu Bu confronted Zhao, and made quick work of him, striking him down with a single blow. Lu Bu then became the highest ranked official in all ancient China. After the death of Zhao, his followers in Liang province in northwest ancient China formed an army to attack the new capital, Changyang, where Lu Bu resided. The army was led by Guo Xi, one of Zhao's loyal warlords. Guo Xi then led his army to attack the city's north gate. He was met by Lu Bu alone, who said, let us not send our soldiers into battle. Instead, let us fight man on man. This action reflect Lu Bu's character. Although reckless, he was also selfless, a man whom men admired and wanted to follow. Lu Bu and Guo Xi engaged in battle. The fight resulted in Guo Xi being injured Although Lu Bu had won the fight, Guo Xi ordered his men to attack Lu Bu, who then had no choice but to retreat. He abandoned Changyang and fled. Because of Lu Bu's immense speed, strength and skill, he was nicknamed the Flying General. Lu Bu, accompanied by a few hundred horsemen, with Dong Zhao's head tied to his saddle, rode around China, trying to find somewhere to settle. Lu Bu eventually settled in northern China, and became friends with Yuan Shao, a warlord who occupied the northern territories of China. Lu Bu seemed to be always fighting, as he quickly helped Yuan in attacking one of his enemies, Zhang Yan. Zhang Yan commanded thousands of elite soldiers, thought to be the finest warriors in all the land. Lu Bu led his forces to the camp of Zhang Yang and picked away at their numbers day by day for 10 days, eventually defeating all of the elite soldiers. Lu Bu, as mighty as he was, was changing. 
He had become arrogant and big-headed. He was becoming everything he hated about his old lord, Zhao. Lubu behaved arrogantly in front of his new ally, Yuan, even sending his own men to pillage Yuan's lands. Yuan then had no choice but to kill Lubu, as he posed a threat to his lands and people. He then formed a plot to kill him. Yuan Shao sent 30 armoured soldiers to escort Lubu out of his lands. Then in the night, Yuan's soldiers went inside his tent and killed the person inside. Lubu, however, was still alive. He had secretly left his tent in the night and had a lookalike sleep inside. This displayed Lubu's cunning and how he knew that his actions made him hated enough to be killed by a former friend. Lubu once again had to flee. The mightiest of warriors always seemed to be on the run due to his reckless and thoughtless actions. He then went to join Zhang Yang, a minor warlord who also resided in the north. Yuan Shao sent men to kill Lubu after rumour had reached his ear that he was still alive. However, his soldiers were so afraid of the man Lubu had become that they dared not try and cross swords with him. Lubu now had enemies all across ancient China, mainly for killing his old lord, Dong Zhao. Li Jue, a warlord who served under Zhao, bribed Zhang Yang to kill Lubu to avenge his old master's death. When Lubu heard of this, he confronted Zhang Yang and said, I'm from the same province as you. If you kill me, you'll become weaker. If you recruit me, you can obtain the same titles and honours as Li Jue. Zhang Yang then double-crossed Li Jue and pretended to help him kill Lu Bu, but instead offered Lu Bu refuge and protection. In the year 194 AD, Lubu managed to seize control of Panyang, a city in the northeastern Henan province. Lubu then declared himself the governor of the entire Yan province. Most of the men in power responded to Lubu's call and defected to his side, having heard great stories of his martial prowess and abilities. However, some provinces still remained loyal to Cao Cao, a warlord and chancellor of the Eastern Han Dynasty. Inevitably, Lu Bu's army and Cao Cao's army engaged in battle at Panyang, where both armies were locked in a savage stalemate for over a hundred days, with each army unable to overpower the other. This resulted in the men having to resort to cannibalism to survive. As well as the fighting, the Yan province was plagued with locusts and droughts. Thus, the fighting couldn't continue. Lu Bu then moved his base from Panyang to Shanyang, further east. Cao Cao then managed to retake all his lands in the Yan province and defeated Lu Bu in battle driving him further east. Lubu then went to the Zhu province and took shelter under Liu Bei, a warlord who founded the state of Shu Han. Lubu treated Liu Bei with respect and even threw a feast for taking him in. Liu Bei, however, was wary of Lubu due to his reputation, but he knew it was better to have him as a friend than an enemy. Yuan Shu, an enemy of Lu Bu's old master, Lord Zhao, wrote to him saying, in the past, Dong Zhao monopolized state power, harmed the imperial family, and murdered my family. I participated in the campaign against him, but didn't manage to kill him. You slew him, and sent me his head. In doing so, you helped me take revenge. This was the first favour you did me. 
Throughout my life, I have never heard of the existence of Liu Bei, but he started a war with me. With your mighty spirit, you are capable of defeating Liu Bei. I am willing to entrust matters of life and death to you. You have been fighting battles for a long time. I hereby send you 200,000 Hu of grain and open my doors to you. If you need any military equipment, just ask. Lu Bu agreed to help Yuan Shu attack Liu Bei. Lu Bu quickly mobilized his troops. They swiftly made their way into the city of Xiapi. Lu Bu and his men slaughtered all the opposition. Once the battle was won, he captured Liu Bei's family. He then sat down and told his troops to set fire to the city, and he watched the city burn. Lu Bu had once again betrayed a man who was protecting him, all for greed and glory. Lu Bu then took Liu Bei's place and declared himself the governor of the Zhu province. Liu Bei, however, still lived. Later that year, Liu Bei and Yuan Shu's armies met and were about to go head to head in a battle due to their conflict as Yan Shu had convinced Lu Bu to betray Liu Bei. Lu Bu, however, was wary of battle and used what can only be described as godly skill with his bow to prevent the battle. Lu Bu said, Gentlemen, watch me fire an arrow at the lower part of that curved blade. If I hit it in one shot, all of you must withdraw your forces and leave. If I don't, you can remain here and prepare for battle. The warlords all agreed to this absurd statement. The blade was hanging there at the gate of the camp and Lubu was said to be so far away he could barely see it. He then raised his bow and fired. His arrow hit exactly the part of the lower blade. All of the soldiers were there in absolute awe of Lubu. They said, General, you must possess heaven's might. The following day, both armies redrew their forces. Cao Cao, an old enemy of Lu Bu, was making preparations for a campaign against him. As Lu Bu heard that Cao Cao was approaching the city of Xiapi, he personally led his troops to engage the enemy. However, he was defeated and forced to retreat back to Xiapi. Lu Bu, for the first time in his life, thought of surrendering. He waited out the siege and thought it would be best to counter-attack once the enemy was low on food and morale. However, Cao Cao flooded the city for over a month. Thus, Lu Bu prepared for his surrender. Lu Bu ordered his men to kill him and take his head to Cao Cao to try and spare some of their lives. His soldiers refused, wanting to stay with their general till the end. Lu Bu left the gates of the city and alone surrendered to Cao Cao. He was tied up and then he said, could you loosen these bonds? Cao Cao replied, a tiger must be tightly restrained. Lu Bu was then executed by hanging and then beheaded. The mightiest of warriors of his time, a man who rose from nothing, a god amongst men, eventually died due to his constant betrayals and his reputation. Lubu was a veteran of a hundred battles and spent his whole life fighting, but in time his behaviour grew erratic and although he was valiant and powerful in some aspects, he lacked wisdom and eventually allowed his pride and greed to rule him. Lubu has now been immortalised by the 14th century historical novel called The Romance of the Three Kingdoms. He also appears in several video games.
Thanks for watching guys. If you liked the video, like and subscribe, and let me know if you enjoy these videos on the warriors of ancient China. See you guys soon.